Uh, okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the ACA, about the design of the actors and communication techniques uh, which uh, are best for usage uh, when you are designing and uh, trying to extend existing uh, actor systems. So, my name is Alex Walinski. I'm a senior Scala developer uh, at VidIQ. Uh, it's a small uh, company uh, based in uh, San Francisco. And actually, we are working with uh, YouTube and uh, making some uh, good things for YouTuber uh, creators. That means that uh, they are able to see uh, more rich analytics and see uh, more insights about their uh, job, about their videos, uh, uh, users' involvement, and so on. Uh, so, uh, I am a blogger as well. You probably uh, have visited previously my blog. Its address is uh, frozenstein.com. And I write there a lot of stuff about the uh, job which I do. Uh, and uh, last three years, uh, it was almost about the Scala, about the ACA, Spark, uh, and Play Framework. Uh, I write everything from the most trivial things uh, to the um, more complex ones. And you may uh, also find me in social networks such as uh, Twitter, Facebook, GitHub, LinkedIn. And uh, almost everywhere I use the same nickname uh, as you see, Frozenstein. So my wife says to me that I publish a lot of useful stuff. And returning back to our today's topic, uh, I just want to run quickly uh, through the uh, ACA and its uh, advantages which it brings to all of the developers who use it. And uh, why actually ACA is impressive? So according to the uh, information which uh, the main site gives us uh, when we visit it first time, we just uh, may notice uh, five uh, main points which uh, describe all of the powers which ACA brings uh, to uh, ACA developers. And the first one is a um, way of a simple uh, development of a distributed and concurrent systems. So, uh, by uh, reading this, you just may assume that you won't have any problems with uh, some logs or uh, regular, regular concurrent problems which uh, any Java developers uh, met in his uh, career. Uh, then you may notice the second point, which uh, tells us that uh, ACA is resilient by design and it's uh, almost uh, all what you need to know about it. It relies on a reactive manifesto and I hope that if you are doing ACA for a while, you have uh, definitely heard about the, uh, this manifesto, which says to us that uh, Originally, uh, any actor system should be designed as a message driven and uh, this means that all of the uh, um, events which happened in the system uh, was triggered by the messages and all the communication uh, comes through the messages. Uh, also, it's, uh, this system should be responsive and responsive, uh, it's all about timing. So all of the uh, responses and reaction of the systems system uh, happens in a, a timely manner. So you definitely don't want to wait more than one second for uh, some urgent uh, uh, requests. And uh, then it says uh, to us that the system should be resilient. And resilient, it's all about the uh, stability of the system, that uh, even if some failure happened, uh, the system continued to react uh, appropriately uh, to the uh, events which happened further. And of course, uh, uh, the block which has name uh, Elastic. So it's all about the scalability and doesn't matter what uh, load uh, your 
uh, system experience uh, in any point of time because if your uh, load uh, grows extremely uh, fast, that means that your system will be uh, scaled out uh, using the uh, appropriate modules uh, delivered by the ACA team. Uh, I mean uh, ACA remote or uh, ACA cluster. And uh, meanwhile, the uh, load uh, just starting to uh, decrease, uh, we just uh, can uh, remain uh, really uh, calm because uh, ACA will do all of the stuff related to uh, collapsing all of uh, extra nodes uh, to the previous one uh, state when we uh, handle the normal load for the system. So the third one uh, sentence say to us that ACA is a high performance toolkit. That means that uh, we are able to handle a more, well, not more, but actually approximately 50 million messages per second uh, if we are using ACA correctly. So correctly means that uh, you should uh, uh, adhere some uh, good practices and rules uh, which will give you a such uh, good uh, benchmarks for performance. And the uh, another one um, number which uh, sounds uh, terrifying, uh, it's uh, approximately two and a half million actors per one gigabyte of heap. So uh, just by thinking about it, you may uh, came to, uh, to, to what? <laughs> uh, you, you just make a solution for really huge systems. Well, uh, the fourth one uh, point, uh, it's all about the uh, modern cloud environments and uh, ACA uh, has uh, modules which allow you to uh, deliver your uh, solution which you uh, created, for example, uh, within the weekends on uh, your laptop and tested uh, it in a, a small a uh, lot uh, while just uh, creating it. You just can add some extra modules for clustering and remoting and just deploy it uh, to the cloud for a wide range of uh, your users' needs and so on. And finally, all of the communication in uh, ACA systems may be uh, uh, may be done as the streams and uh, ACA streams is based on the well known uh, in the programming uh, industry as the reactive stream uh, specification. And of course, uh, when you are thinking about the streaming, it's not just about the uh, uh, passing data through all of the stages of uh, some stream. It uh, also relates to uh, data sources. So sometimes you need to grab data from a uh, data store and uh, uh, as a result it um, may be helpful to store this uh, stream of data somewhere. So Alpaca it's actually a set of connectors to different data stores which allow you to use ECHO streams exactly for these purposes. Well, uh, after this uh, brief introduction about the ACA in general, you may uh, think about the, uh, any actor system as about the entire universe, because uh, there are a lot of actors represented, for example, as a star, stars, I mean, and uh, all of them are uh, pulling uh, uh, light, so we can think about the light like about the actors, and uh, all the time in any point of uh, this system we just can observe some communication, so f just uh, uh, observing that uh, some photons uh, go from there to there, uh, from here to there, and actually this is the best way to describe the actor system. So this it could be uh, extremely huge, and meanwhile um, this chaos actually uh, could be controllable. And of course, uh, in the middle of the uh, of any actor system stays actor. So this is uh, small 
small star, uh, it's one of the millions of actors which uh, could be created inside of any actor system. And uh, by saying this, uh, I need to answer on a, a very important question uh, which any actor, uh, not actor, but Scala developer should ask uh, uh, himself um, while starting working with Akka. So, what is an actor? Actor is the uh, smallest unit of any actor system. And in general, so briefly speaking and roughly speaking, it encapsulates just two things. The first one is a business logic, and the second one is the state. And if we want to give some more uh, extended definition of that, uh, I will provide you an illustration for this. And uh, here I illustrated some of the properties with which uh, any actor can do. Uh, and uh, actually, any actor has these properties. Uh, so, firstly, any actor has a possibility to receive messages. All of these messages are handled uh, in a special place, uh, which is uh, called a mailbox. So all of the messages uh, came into the mailbox. Then uh, actor has a mechanism which uh, could be called as a um, simulation of a single thread uh, environment. Uh, don't be confused about the uh, multi-threading and concurrent uh, words uh, which I said previously, but ACA gives you ability to manage a data or uh, proceed with uh, some actions uh, inside of the actor uh, in a single thread environment, uh, some sort of a single thread environment. Then uh, any actor is able to uh, respond to the actor uh, to the another actor's uh, messages and uh, send back uh, reactions on uh, these uh, messages uh, and of course another one important uh, property which any actor has uh, its ability to create uh, child actors so not only handling of uh, messages and uh, receiving it and sending it uh, out, but also creation a new one actors in order to be able to delegate some of uh, tasks or uh, scale ability of uh, processing a huge amount of data. Uh, also, I uh, want to add here on this slide one important detail about the uh, not less uh, valuable feature for any actor is uh, its pass uh, among the other actors uh, within the actor system. So that means that we are able to determine any actor uh, within the system just by uh, calling its uh, unique pass. So this is pretty important and uh, valuable uh, for uh, all of the actors because we are able to determine and uh, direct uh, the messages which we want to exact actor uh, which we are uh, going to achieve. So, uh, after we considered all of the uh, positive sides and advantages of the uh, ACA, after we answered on the question, uh, what is actor? I just wanted to add that uh, Akka actually has a really good documentation. Uh, it's a continuously uh, developing uh, set of docs, and uh, actually it's like uh, scientific literature, because uh, you just uh, could dive into it uh, within a month and read and read and read uh, new and new chapters from that, and learning and new stuff uh, about the ACA modules, uh, some particular features or mechanism how to deal with uh, mm, some parts of uh, uh, ACA system. But uh, the main drawback of uh, these docs is that it gives you just uh, knowledge, knowledge of uh, system and their components. But docs uh, doesn't give you an answer how to use uh, all of these uh, abilities of uh, ACA 
uh, for real world problems. So they just said, okay, we have actors, okay, we have uh, different ways to handle failures of uh, communication between actors, but everything what is related to a concrete uh, realization of your own business uh, solution, it's up to you. So you have actors, just uh, think about it, imagine how you can apply them, and voila. So that's all what you need to do. But uh, since many, many people uh, among the Scala developers uh, already created some uh, reactive systems uh, based on uh, the ACCA, so I decided to collect all of the best practices or uh, best advices uh, in order to uh, give you a small hints how you can improve your current system or uh, if you are going to create a new one system, I mean actor system, uh, this knowledge and these advices uh, will be really helpful for you uh, just to avoid uh, mistakes which uh, all of the previous developers who started to use Akka uh, before you uh, have uh, successfully complete. So uh, it's a good idea to uh, refer to the already existing knowledge base just to avoid uh, problems which may occur in the development of uh, uh, actor systems in uh, your own cases. So the first one advice uh, sounds like uh, think about an actor like about a function. So uh, in general uh, if we will think about uh, actor we just can think about it like a function which uh, accepts a message of uh, type M, let's say, and actually, according to the ACCA uh, actors documentation, you are able to return nothing or unit. And that's pretty okay because uh, not all of actions require you to uh, send back or return back uh, some exact value. So that's pretty okay. But uh, from uh, my practice and from uh, different sources, I mean uh, some uh, communities or some Stack Overflow threads, I noticed that uh, most of the uh, really experienced uh, Akka developers, they say that uh, it's more valuable and it's more helpful uh, for uh, designing your system when uh, on uh, each message which comes into your actor, you return something. Because uh, in a, this way, it's much easier to understand what actually happened inside of your actor. So, uh, for example, when you say uh, hi to any person which you meet somewhere in office, uh, it's natural when you uh, heard in a response, uh, hi or hello, or something like that. Because uh, it's okay to see that uh, somebody reacts on uh, uh, your action. So the same happens in the ACA world, because actors are communicating with each other. And for example, when you want to persist something, so uh, you are creating an action which has, a, mm, for example, name save person, and you don't want to just uh, fire and forget. So uh, this is a well-known phrase for uh, ACA docs readers, so fire and forget event. Uh, you don't want just to drop it uh, into the another actor and that's it. So I saved it. But from other side, you just need to think about consequences which may occur because uh, that fact that you send a save event to another actor, it doesn't mean that uh, this event was performed success successfully. And in order to avoid this, let's uh, consider and prove this concept uh, through this example. So here I uh, created a pretty trivial actor which uh, has name arithmetical actor and it has uh, just two messages. The first one has name sum and uh, this message actually encapsulates just two uh, fields. Uh, all of them are double and it's not hard to assume what it uh, actually performs. So it uh, adds uh, one uh, double to another double. 
And as a result for, uh, for this uh, pretty trivial instance, we want to see uh, some result message. So what actually happened inside of that actor? And when we have uh, previously uh, developed interface, and by uh, saying interface, I mean the entire set of the messages which you are going to use uh, for this concrete actor, you can easily start uh, implementing the receive uh, function. So this is a, a basic override uh, function which need to be implemented in uh, each uh, actor class. And you are able easily just to uh, manage all of that uh, previously defined uh, messages or interfaces um, from your companion object uh, for this actor. And it uh, looks really uh, simple. So uh, just by looking onto the uh, add operation, you see that we are returning back the add result. And in the case of uh, unknown message, which you uh, may accidentally send to this actor, you just uh, may uh, introduce another one uh, message inside of the uh, companion object or on a some uh, more general uh, object inside of your system because it's a pretty common situation to handle uh, unknown messages in the actors. So I commented uh, this line, uh, but you can easily use it. The next one uh, message which I want to bring into this audience is that uh, naming uh, is really important uh, in terms of uh, defining messages which you are using uh, for your uh, actors. And uh, I guess that all of you heard previously, many, many years ago when you started your developer's careers, that naming convention is important because if you don't want to bring some extra mess into your project, you just need to uh, uh, agree, agree with your uh, teammates uh, what naming conventions do you use for uh, that or um, this uh, entities into your code. And uh, what relates to ACA messages, I mean actor messages, uh, you can easily uh, define two groups of uh, messages. The first one is the actions, and uh, actions actually means commands or intentions. So you are going to do something. Uh, for example, uh, make a coffee or uh, save a person. So this is just intention. And uh, as a reaction, so opposite uh, to the uh, actions, you just uh, could uh, introduce and think about the responses like about the completed actions. So facts, uh, coffee created, or for example, uh, database uh, error occurred. So something uh, in the past tense. And it uh, gives you a really good uh, practice for managing of all uh, processes which are hidden uh, under the uh, actor's interfaces. Because you are starting defining all of the activities inside of your system uh, like just uh, uh, two different uh, events. The first one is uh, commons, and the second one is uh, uh, something what happened, so facts. Uh, this is actually what was related to the first advice. The second advice says to us that uh, before, before you actually uh, start implement some uh, actor's logic, you'd better to define the strict interfaces uh, for further communication of your actors. And from my previous uh, slide explanation, uh, it's easily to uh, guess that uh, it's all about uh, planning and designing actors starting from the messages which uh, this actor should to handle. And uh, from this point of view, uh, just by implementing a new feature or rewriting the old one, you need to uh, sit uh, somewhere with a white paper or with uh, some uh, sheet of paper and write down all of the uh, actions uh, or events, what happened 
actually within this domain area. Doesn't matter, this is a big one or small one domain area, you just can broke it on a smaller parts and uh, then define a really uh, strict number of messages or set of messages which uh, these actors or group of actors handle. And by illustrating this, I just want to uh, bring a small example here. Uh, for example, if we want to handle a pretty common uh, situation, a user creation, so almost all of the modern systems deal uh, with uh, users or accounts, and when you want to create a user, of course, uh, you need to uh, think uh, about the uh, message which instantiate the initiate sorry uh, this process and what you get as a result uh, so positive flow uh, you just send uh, some data to the actor user data and as a result you will receive uh, ID let's say ID of the user user created but what actually happens between the uh, init action and the successful completion of this action uh, Actually, there are several things, bad things, uh, which may occur uh, between these uh, two actions. The first one is that probably email may be already in use. So in this case, we need to react appropriately and uh, just give an appropriate error message about that. And uh, another one bad situation is that we lost the connection with our data source. And um, this message uh, need to be uh, shown to the user as well. Uh, and by using a regular Scala syntax, we may uh, introduce a sealed trait, or here I just used a regular trait, uh, and its name is a UC error, so user creation error, and uh, extend the appropriate uh, case classes with uh, this trait. And as a result, you will be able to uh, think about uh, further implementation of your actor logic just based on the messages which you defined uh, on one step previously before doing that. And this is a really helpful, uh, but uh, probably some of you might think that, come on, man, this is a too simple example. And when you are saying all of that uh, things, for such a trivial scenario, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But what you would say if we will uh, bring some real world problems into this process, I mean user creation process. In uh, modern systems, at least uh, with uh, that ones which I worked, uh, it's a pretty often situation, uh, pretty frequent situation, when uh, you need to interact with uh, external services uh, while you are performing some operation. For example, you need to uh, handle uh, some extra data uh, which you send to uh, services, for example, payment services or notification services or support services uh, such as uh, MailChimp or uh, Intercom or Stripe. So uh, in uh, many cases you need to uh, duplicate the data which uh, entered your system and uh, create appropriate entities in another system, in external systems. And that means uh, that uh, in terms of uh, actor and actor messages, you need to introduce some uh, extra messages. And here, for example, uh, based on the latest uh, example, we need to introduce Two new messages. The first one is a create support account, uh, for example, in the intercom service for communication with the users. And the second one message is uh, about creation of uh, uh, related uh, account uh, within the uh, payment system uh, for this newly created user. And when you are going to introduce these uh, messages, you need to uh, start thinking about where I need to put all of these messages. Because from the one side, it all relates uh, to the user creation process. But from another side, you need to handle uh, these actions probably not in the same actor. 
because uh, in this way you will uh, overload uh, your uh, throughput of the concrete uh, user and probably you would better to place uh, such uh, messages into appropriate uh, actors. And by demonstrating this, uh, I just show you what may happen inside of the uh, message handling uh, code uh, for user creation. So let's assume that we want to uh, handle a user creation. And in this uh, scenario, we need uh, firstly to uh, strictly define our sender user. And I will explain uh, further uh, this um, action for those of you who are not uh, really good familiar with uh, ACA. And by uh, going further through the code, you may see that we are performing a uh, check email uh, action uh, onto the DB uh, um, object which we uh, passed to the uh, user creation actor. And you may notice that we are uh, executing this uh, method invocation and then we are mapping uh, this uh, result uh, to uh, possible two cases. The first one is that we don't have any results, so that means that the email which we are going to use for the further user creation is free, so it's okay for us, it's a good scenario. And then we are uh, going for one logical step uh, into the uh, next process, and that means that we want to insert this particular record into our database. And as a result, we may receive a database error, this is the best scenario, or a user-created message. So um, by doing this, uh, we are uh, able to have a full control under the process of uh, user creation. So from the one side, we uh, will have uh, more information about the problems which occurred uh, during the uh, process of uh, handling of the data. So validation, uh, some checks, and uh, some technical aspects such as a database connection. And from the other side, we are able just to receive a uh, successful result with uh, um, important information such as a user ID, a recently user created ID for further, further processing. And advice number three. Uh, it actually relates to the previous one advice, and uh, I mentioned uh, such a term as the delegation of uh, uh, actions to another one actors. And that means that we need to uh, probably think about a global messages which we are uh, going to send to some actors as about some smaller tasks. So uh, what if uh, we will add some extra uh, steps to the previous one uh, scenario and not just handle all of the uh, logic uh, in uh, one uh, stage of the uh, message uh, handling because in uh, this scenario I will return back uh, just assume that we have some uh, three more uh, invocation of a uh, async uh, functions into this code. So that will mean that uh, our level of uh, uh, nesting of the code, it will be go further, further, and further, and uh, this is pretty uh, common when you are doing everything in this way, I mean putting all of the uh, operation inside of uh, handling of uh, one message, you will uh, go out of the screen. So you will not have enough uh, memory uh, I mean your physical memory in your head, just to uh, understand what happens in the handling of this message, because uh, this message at first won't be able to uh, percept, okay, for the developers or for your teammates and even for yourself. And uh, from the other side, it uh, will bring a really uh, bad performance uh, characteristics for this particular actor. So uh, by dividing uh, uh, complex messages and uh, complex uh, actions uh, on the smaller ones, for example, here we just want to initiate a process of uh, user creation just from the small message which has 
a really uh, straightforward explanation. So firstly, we want to check email. Is it already in use or no? And uh, from the code which you see uh, on the slides, you are easily able to see that, okay, uh, it's much easier to understand what happens in uh, this particular small uh, piece of code, and uh, it's much easier to uh, describe all of the process which happens uh, under the scenes when we want to uh, describe this process on uh, level of the actors. So that means that a complex uh, actions shouldn't be represented as uh, one message. So. Uh, try to break everything on the most smallest parts uh, as uh, the main uh, area allows you to do it. Uh, then, the next one, advice, is about the delegation. Uh, not just uh, breaking everything into the small tasks uh, in the context of uh, one actor, but don't forget to create a, a child actors for handling of uh, some subtasks. Because uh, as I said earlier in uh, this uh, talk, that uh, actors are mm, implementing a so-called single thread environment. So try to use as much single thread environments as you can. Because by doing that, you parallelize your uh, flow execution uh, most efficiently. Uh, so, by doing that, uh, you are able to handle all of your problems uh, in uh, many different places simultaneously. And this is really okay. But don't forget to avoid intermediate ask. So uh, what does it mean? Uh, actually, for people who worked with uh, uh, Akka a while, you definitely know that Akka has uh, different ways of uh, communication between the actors. The first one and the most trivial one is that uh, fire and forget. So uh, everyone know about that. This is a well-known tell uh, technique. So you're just sending uh, the message and you do not care what happened then. Uh, and from, from the other side, uh, there is a contrary method which is uh, named ask. And that means that uh, by sending message uh, using the ask uh, method, you are really curious what happened with the message which you sent. So uh, under the hood, Akka creates another one observer uh, actor to handle this uh, process of waiting for a response. But in a situation when you are creating a lot of child actors and trying to delegate all of the stuff to them, just try to avoid the ask uh, pattern uh, as much as you can. And further, I will show you how you can do it. Uh, so here is a small illustration of how you can create uh, child actors uh, inside of your uh, main actor. And actually, um, here I am continue working with the previous example. So just by using user creation actor, uh, we are adding here some extra logic which is related to communication with the external systems. So when we want to uh, guarantee the creation of uh, uh, our complementary entities in uh, partnerships uh, systems such as uh, support system and for example payment system and so on. Then returning back to the advice uh, related to the ask. So here is how ask looks like uh, uh, if we will illustrate it. So the actor A receives some message and actor A uh, was designed in the way of uh, delegation of its work to another one actors. And by doing that, it's uh, really uh, easily to ask another one, for example, child uh, actor, to uh, perform some action or to do some uh, smaller task uh, which was sent to the, uh, from the uh, parent actor. And in its turn, uh, it may send uh, its message uh, to the another one actor, which was created uh, even by not the A actor, but another one uh, creator from the actor system. And as a result, you see that 
these uh, two question signs, uh, they are actually representing another one actors which observes all of these messages. And by doing that, you are collapsing the entire number of uh, actors which you may handle by your system because you are creating by every uh, uh, ask uh, word, you are creating a new one actors which are not really useful because uh, they just observe the state of the actor. And how to avoid that? So, uh, in case when you are uh, strong in your, uh, let's say, uh, intentions, and uh, despite the fact that uh, many experienced Scala devs uh, uh, recommended you to avoid that, uh, the first thing uh, is uh, A, A case. When you are going to uh, use, for example, timeouts, uh, because any ask uh, pattern usage, uh, it implies uh, timeout uh, introduction. Uh, and if uh, the message wasn't handled uh, within this timeout, you will receive back the uh, ask timeout uh, exception. And that means that, uh, okay, you may ignore uh, the devices and put into all of your subsequent actors uh, timeout from your configs. But that means that if the uh, config was set, for example, for five seconds, uh, each next actor, uh, which, uh, by the way, is illustrated as uh, uh, colored lines, will receive the uh, message from the previous one, uh, asker. Uh, they will have the same amount of time, but in general, some time was already spent uh, from the previous sector. So this is the error-prone uh, approach. Another one uh, case is a B case, uh, which is related to a custom timeouts. When you are setting up all of the uh, timeouts uh, manually, so you are just thinking, all right, if the first one actor was uh, allowed to use five seconds, so let's say our next one operation is allowed just to take uh, four seconds, and the subsequent uh, ask uh, pattern will use only three seconds, and so on. So this is the way to nowhere, and in order to avoid it, here is the case C, which gives you a nice ability to use just uh, a combination of uh, uh, fire and forget and forward messages in order to avoid uh, using of uh, multiple uh, timeouts in the different actors which are going to use all of the uh, subsequent uh, calculations. So by using uh, forwards and tell, you are able to substitute uh, all of your uh, ask uh, pattern hell uh, inside of your actors. And uh, by doing that, you are able to use uh, this wonderful construction uh, just by asking the first one actor uh, to send the message, for example, to, uh, check email with some user data. You are just using then uh, map to uh, message and not message, but uh, function, sorry. And you are mapping to the uh, some uh, generic, generic uh, trait which you define for the result which uh, user creation actor may return to you. And from the other side, we are still uh, warning about the uh, ask timeout exception, and we are going to just uh, save ourselves uh, by using recover with function. And this construction may be used as uh, some sort of pattern because uh, it's really helpful and it covers all of uh, exceptional situation and responses from your actor. And uh, by listening to all of this, you may start and think about that uh, I described a module uh, which has a name and ACA typed, and actually that means that by introducing uh, mm, really strongly typed uh, messages by implementing uh, CL traits for responses for messages which uh, you receive by the particular actor. You just uh, creating uh, some hooks for uh, substituting a uh, typed uh, module which uh, is still under development. But as I figured out from one of the uh, most uh, optimistic men from the community who is using ACA type, so you definitely know uh, him, his name is uh, Heiko. Uh, 
uh, are you, for example? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I asked him about uh, his training, uh, which he made uh, for uh, Akatype. So is it ready for uh, real time, uh, for real world examples and practicing in the real uh, systems? Uh, he said that, of course, it's marked uh, still uh, in the documentation as the API may change, but it's okay to use it because uh, everything, almost almost everything is uh, already completed. The next one pattern, uh, oh sorry, advice which I may give you is to use uh, in uh, places which are uh, really under the heavy pressure in your system is to use uh, rotors. Rotors give you ability to uh, spread the load uh, of your system between the many uh, clones of uh, actors and in this way you are increasing the throughput uh, of your system. So, advice number seven, uh, everything is an actor. So, this means that uh, everything what you want to uh, create inside of your system should be represented as an actor because uh, it's a good practice uh, which allow you to keep everything consistent. Um, as an example uh, of uh, possible entities which you may uh, try to, to implement not as an actors, uh, it's uh, uh, some data access layer. Uh, as a rule, all of the developers who worked uh, with uh, Spring previously, they like to um, use uh, so-called DAO layers or repositories for uh, data access functions. And uh, regardless, uh, it's pretty uh, good habit for uh, standard enterprise practices uh, with the Spring. Uh, you actually uh, have to avoid this in ACA, uh, in ACA sorry. And uh, this can be substituted just uh, by a creation of a new uh, actor, which uh, has uh, queries, uh, doesn't matter, this is uh, uh, get queries or some uh, modify queries for data. Uh, you just represent them as a um, set of messages uh, for further processing, uh, like uh, regular uh, SQL or no SQL uh, requests to your data stores. And uh, here, how a such uh, data access actor may look like. For example, user payment actor. So uh, as a constructor argument, we are using uh, some abstract database. Uh, doesn't matter which one do you use, for example, MySQL or Postgres or uh, anything else. You just uh, then interacting with this database instance as uh, with uh, uh, your mm, data store by using its native methods. For example, here we are using insert. And of course, this uh, insert operation was uh, initiated by the message which um, actor receives and its name is safe payment. Uh, so that's how uh, I would like to explain that everything uh, inside of the uh, actor system should be represented uh, as an actor. The final advice, it's about uh, streams. So, um, the most attentive of you who uh, was uh, in this uh, room today while I was uh, speaking about the actors may notice that uh, all of the advices was moving uh, by uh, just improvement uh, of a previous one advice. And as a result, we uh, came uh, to the most uh, ideal uh, way to represent processes which occur in any actor system. And it's actually uh, streams. Because by implementing streams, you are just uh, avoiding manual creation of uh, that uh, stages inside of the actors. Uh, you are avoiding a bottlenecks uh, in terms of uh, uh, mailbox uh, capabilities of uh, uh, any uh, actor. So by using uh, ACA, ACA streams for 
a solution of uh, uh, complex tasks which could be represented as uh, some set of rules, some uh, graphs, uh, you are just making the final step uh, to creation of a really, uh, really clean and understandable systems. And here I just illustrated uh, uh, some message which uh, receives uh, actor, for example, A1, and then uh, actor 1 uh, sends it uh, to the uh, next stages of the graph, which was uh, previously defined uh, for solution of uh, this uh, computation. And as a result, we are able to handle uh, the final uh, result, uh, for example, uh, some type n. And here is how uh, this approach could be applied to our example which uh, went uh, with us uh, through the, all of this presentation, so user creation. Here is the set of the messages which I prepared for demonstration of uh, stream uh, capabilities. Uh, here, so we have a create user uh, message which uh, initiates the process, then we have a sealed trait for creation user result, and then we have uh, some uh, generic uh, trait for errors, and finally we have some uh, case classes which represent present actually the successful result of a user creation and some errors which may occur uh, within these uh, stages. And here how this code uh, looks like when we are going to implement this particular uh, flow stages. So first of all we see that uh, we have uh, a check user email flow uh, which accepts a, a create user uh, case class uh, as the input uh, parameter. Then we are doing some manipulation uh, with it uh, within uh, the database requirements. I mean, we need to check that uh, this user uh, doesn't exist uh, yet in the database in order to go further for a successful flow. And then we start to describe uh, another one stages, for example, uh, check some third party service uh, for uh, existence of uh, this uh, user record uh, on uh, their side. And uh, then we are doing the same uh, actions for description of the following stages, for example, safe user flow, and as a result we are able to create a runnable graph uh, using these stages which uh, were described on the previous slides, and as a result we will uh, see uh, that it's uh, pretty uh, uh, clear to understand what happens uh, within the invocation of this graph. So firstly, we uh, send uh, some message which uh, wants to create a user, then we are checking email uh, for this user, then we are checking the third party service, and finally we are uh, trying to save this user uh, into the database. And as a result, we will receive uh, uh, some entity and it's a good practice to use some container for this entity. Uh, as example here I use Azer. So from the one side we will be able to handle any of the errors uh, which are generalized by the sealed trait uh, in order to give back uh, in a best scenario uh, right uh, uh, error message to the user, and in case if everything was okay, we will just re return back a uh, successful message. Well, uh, that was all about the uh, advices which I will give uh, to the listeners uh, and uh, ACA enthusiasts. And actually, here, here are my recommendations about where you uh, can get more information or more detailed information about the topic which I uh, discussed today. So the first one is a uh, book uh, which has named Applied ACA Patterns. The second one uh, book is uh, named ACA in Action. Uh, then don't forget about the most uh, popular uh, Stack Overflow community, actually. There you will be able to find uh, good answers on uh, really good questions. Uh, and don't forget about the Gitter uh, ACA channel. And of course, uh, don't uh, forget to try your own experience because uh, the most uh, 
the best teacher for any one of us. It's our own experience. So, big thanks to everyone who was uh, today in uh, this room. Actually, here is uh, my nickname in Twitter, and here is my blog. So, big thanks. <laughs>